I'm going to ask you one more question, Mohammed, and then move to Brian. But um, one of the things that that I loved about your startup is that you're working very closely with Aramex, and I found that great on both sides because you're tapping onto an ecosystem that's there yeah. instead of you going and building f again because scaling in the Arab world across borders is hard. Yeah. If you tap into a big giant who already has the pipelines, who someone opens doors for you, then you can do that. Tell us about your experience with Aramex. I don't want to speak on the particulars of Aramex, but of how you're working with a private sector company and what you're doing with them to enhance their product and at the same time allow you to operate easier. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think it was, a, it was a strategic decision that we took from the very beginning of how to set up the business, right? So we could have come in and said, okay, we want to set up a warehouse, uh, figure out all the, do our own, own shipping, figure out, set up entities in each country and, and do it all ourselves, uh, which I think would have A, led to some serious failure. Uh, been much, much slower than what we were able to do and not been able to give us, open up our ability to focus on our core strengths uh, in building the business. So, so what we do is fashion e-commerce. So we have, uh, we bring in actually uh, about, now we have about 600 brands, uh, 12,000 styles of product that is in season and in stock. We actually use the Aramex facility in Dubai Logistics City, which we set up from the very beginning as a, as a partnership from a 3PL uh, warehousing, uh, fulfillment and everything is done in partnership with uh, with Aramex actually. So we actually, sit there. we actually have yes, we have a facility that so actually the team, the operations team sits in the DLC facility and we meet with and we're, we work hand in hand with Aramex on a day to day basis uh, for bringing in all of our stock. We we do all of the 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 inbound and then we actually. We, we warehouse it, and then for the fulfillment as well. So we ship through, I actually spent last week in Saudi with the, the Aramex Saudi team in Jeddah and Riyadh. And what we, the relationship allows us to do, to your question, is to get around the same table with the folks who are dealing with this on a day-to-day -day basis on the logistics end and br collectively brainstorm, right? So we're talking about, for instance, uh, just a couple of tidbits from the Saudi trip. There's some challenges in Saudi, and we all know it, right, in terms of getting cut packages to customers, and, and there's some particularities in that market, which really do require a hand-in-hand -hand partnership between the e-commerce player and the logistics provider, right? So we understand when are people most likely to be at home. How, maybe we need to extend the delivery times until midnight, which is now what the team is doing in Saudi, right? So it's something normally in another market. You're going to deliver a package at 11 p.m., really? But that's the flexibility that you really need to do in order to understand, you know, you understand the market. We work hard to make sure that the data that we send them is as robust as possible. We take their feedback and improve our processes and, um, and likewise. Fadio, why do you do that? I mean, is it purely something that helps Aramex or is it your altruistic hat on, philanthropic hat on? There's nothing altruistic about this. So this is about making money. It is about the traditional old story of customizing every single product and service to the client's needs. Very simple. This is what you want. This is what we're going to do. The system in Aramex is built around that flexibility. So if you're small, if you're a very small e-commerce company, Ahlan wa Sahlan will do exactly what you want. We actually have an e-commerce facility today in, in, in Dubai, outside of DLC. Specifically for small companies, we will warehouse for them, we will do uh, uh, the back orders for them. We'll do, what, you didn't announce it yet? <laughs> okay, so it will be announced today. So Naina, where's Naina? Naina, breaking is, news, breaking news. This is an announcement, so yes. Uh, why the heck didn't you tell me, Akhi? <laughs> You see, this is, there's the disconnect between an exiting CEO and the team that is running it. Wait, let me read uh, that. I, I thought I was exiting at the end of the year. It seems my team has already exited me. <laughs> so, thank you, Hassan. So, taking the, the, the privilege of being the CEO, I am announcing it now. So, yes, we are putting together a facility that actually enables e-commerce players, the smallest to the biggest. Uh, and we'll do everything for them from scratch. So it's okay, they will compete with him, but we're in the business of actually making the ecosystem work. And, and we have learned from, from Souk, from, yes, uh, Samir, we've learned from you a lot, from Namshi, from everyone. We're, we're, uh, we've learned from, uh, from the Amazons of the world. If you didn't know, we actually deliver Amazon not only through shop and chip, we actually integrate Amazon into the region. So uh, we, we are a learning company by definition. So, and we learn from our clients and we adapt and we're flexible enough to make sure that we're able to, to serve uh, across the board a, a customized product. So yes, that's, we do so, it because that's, that's how we live. Hopefully other companies 
the private sector will do the same thing you have. The Meaning what? I Competing mean, with uh, us? No, no, like the telcos, for example, or the banks that are over the, world, over the region, those offer a huge opportunity for the small players getting big to w work with you, enhance the private sector, and then go back. I'm not sure if some of your friends, I mean, imagining a CEO friends a lounge with cigars and talking about how you work with startups, maybe not. But I mean, I, I mean uh, am, I, am I, do you know, like who else, who else from, 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 you think, from the private sector uh, also has this mentality for startups? Because uh, I think they are, not everyone is an e-commerce player. Who else do you think has that? No one. <laughs> no, no, I'm joking. I don't know. I mean, I am... I'm always uh, uh, preaching this story to everyone in, this, in, in, in the industry. If you're a big company, buy from small companies. If you're a big company, if you're a small, if you're a med medium-sized company, you buy from a small company. Mm -hmm. uh, there are plenty of small and medium-sized businesses. There are plenty of startups who give fantastic services. You don't need to go to, with all due respect, to the McKinsey's of the world to get consulting work. There are small boutique shops that can actually give you that. Why? Why do I say that? Nothing against the big guys. They will probably do a much better uh, product. But uh, we are in a challenge today in the Arab world, and I don't want to be in the preaching mode, which I do all the time. There is a massive challenge in the Arab world in creating jobs. And if the big private sector companies, big, medium size, anybody in the private sector does not make sure that they open a platform of actually engaging these small and medium sized businesses, which are the biggest creators of jobs, it's not us, it's not Aramex that is the biggest creator of jobs, it's, it's those companies that create five to ten jobs uh, businesses. If you don't enable them, if we don't open platforms, if we don't engage them, if we don't do commerce with them, if we don't open markets for them, if we don't uh, give them access to capital, then we are going to continuously be reliant on government, which is, which is a terrible thing to do, that you rely on government to actually solve these problems by either creating jobs in government or giving them access to capital which has no return to it. So you, you teach the entrepreneur to be lazy because money without, re, without uh, being accountable for investors is, is, is a recipe for disaster. So uh, look, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a way of life. You either do it or you, or you don't do it. If you okay. think of profitability as, uh, as monetary profitability only, if you think of returns only as profit returns, then, then you will actually maximize your profits. But if you think that social uh, stability in the country you live in has actual returns, has actual value, which it does, uh, then you are going to do both. Yeah. So a country like Syria, and we can talk about Syria today, where you see upheaval, do you think businesses are thriving there? Do you think the private sector should have thought about what could have happened and participated in that process or, or your country in Lebanon? What does the private sector do? How does the private sector participate in actually stabilizing uh, and neutralizing all the issues that are political and putting them aside and, and seeing what, what, what the youth are looking for? So anyway, so it is politics, uh, but uh, in, a, in a different, uh, in disguise. Right. No, so I, I think this is very important and I, and I encourage entrepreneurs to always identify the people in the private sectors and the bigger companies who are opening their doors we, in, as a part of our startups, for example, we have ShopGo here, and they've been having a lot of ease working with Aramex, a lot of ease working with Ahlibank in, in, in Jordan. There are some of those big companies opening doors. It's important to identify them.